Hi, my name is uh, Robert falcon Dillette, the Member of Parliament for Winnipeg Centre, and here I'm with uh, three of my uh, favourite uh, colleagues. Uh, so I've got Marianne Mahaychuk uh, to my left here from uh, Kildonan. Uh, St. Paul. St. Paul, yes. I can ne never forget Kildonan, St. Paul, and Winnipeg, <laughs> Manitoba. I've got another very good friend, the Parliamentary Secretary to Indigenous Services, uh, Don Rusnak, Thunder Bay, Rainy River, and my very good friend, Mike Bossio, one of the friendliest MPs on the Hill from Hastings, Lennoxville, <laughs> and Addington. Yeah. And uh, so thank you all for coming. Uh, today we had a really important event that occurred on Parliament. We, you know, obviously all the work that we do on committees and other things. Uh, Terribly important. Very important, yes. Yeah. But uh, it was the economic update from the Minister of Finance. And so Good he news. stood up in the in the House of Commons, made a very important announcement, updating, obviously, telling people uh, what's going on with the Canadian economy, and also outlining uh, what he was going to be doing to increase the economic development in this country. And so one of the things that, that occurred uh, is the Canada Child Benefit. So uh, I've, is there anyone who would like to just just talk a bit about kind of what occurred there. Uh, well, the it's, it's great news for for families that are struggling, low income. Um, it'll give an additional five hundred and sixty dollars a year to low income families, which is a huge benefit. If you have kids, this is a big boon to you, and we're very proud of the government. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, Don, in your writing, what's the impact that the Canada Child Benefit had? Well, during the campaign, I said that uh, we, we need to stop giving money to millionaires, and that's essentially what we're doing. I have friends who are doctors and, and lawyers uh, in, in Thunder Bay, Rainy River, and they don't need my, uh, extra money for their kids. We need to be supporting the most vulnerable in our society and lifting them up. Uh, so that's what this uh, child benefit has done, and uh, uh, coming out ahead and indexing it a full two years ahead of schedule will help even more families. Yeah, it's and incredible. It's, and that's uh, and that's exactly the story in my in my writing. It's helping so many families because I've got the second highest level of, of uh, food insecurity in the province in my writing. I've got one of the highest child poverty rates in the in the writing, and this is putting 5.9 million dollars every single month into my writing. That's benefiting 9,300 families and almost 17,000 children. Uh, this is a huge deal because all of that money, guess what? It's spent and it's spent locally. So the economic boost that it provides to our writings is absolutely a game changer uh, in writings like mine. Yeah, pretty incredible. Uh, one of the things that people often don't know about is, but uh, when you give money to uh, richer Canadians through tax breaks, incentives, uh, often they just invest it and they, they put it back in the bank. But when you give money to actually people who are the working poor or those aspiring to the middle class, as we, as we like to say, uh, they actually go out and spend it on things they need and helping their kids uh, get clothing, more education, more getting more services for their families. And so we saw the GDP go up, it's 2% to 2 point, or 3.6% now, which is... 7%, uh, 4 and a half percent for the last quarter. And this, and, and you, uh, you make another really great point, right? That's the best thing about this working income tax benefit as well, is that once again, when you're living in a, uh, when you have a riding that's relatively impoverished with a high unemployment rate, this now incentivizes individuals who, who you know, are, are on social assistance that really do want to work, but they're looking and go, okay, I can't afford to because if I do, I'm going to lose my social assistance. This now puts them over the top where they can actually go out and get a job and still uh, earn more than they would if they were on social assistance and be able to provide that much more for their families. So between the Ch Canada Child Benefit and the Working Income Tax Benefit, it really is a one-two punch that, that does a lot for families. And in the Working Income Tax Benefit standpoint, it also is doing a lot for single uh, low-income individuals as well. So those were two measures that we put in place. Now, uh, really quickly, because I, obviously people are probably getting a little tired watching politicians talk, uh, <laughs> but this is important news for a lot of people. You all, all three of you are on the Indigenous and Northern Affairs uh, Committee. I was just wondering if you could just describe, you know, one by one uh, what you did this week and why it was important. Well, we're looking at land claims and many communities really have been cheated of benefits and they, there's a lot of negotiators and chiefs looking to uh, get a settlement so that it helps economic development in their communities. So we've been looking at that for the past couple months and just like the child benefit, this is all about helping individuals get a fair shake and get what was rightfully theirs. And so land claims, both specific and comprehensive, are very important on the road for truth and reconciliation. 
Don? Well, in an era of reconciliation, we're hearing that processes and systems developed over many years aren't working for uh, First Nation and Indigenous communities across this country. We're hearing uh, suggestions on how to fix that, uh, yeah. and those recommendations will go to Parliament and uh, the government will act. And you take them to the minister, I guess, as well as the PS, the parliamentary secretary. Uh, well, it, wrong department, but uh, I still speak to Minister Bennett, So, but <laughs> I, I'm in the services department. The but, services uh, department, sorry. We, 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 we absolutely have a role to play, and we're, we're building up uh, communities. Uh, and uh, I know Minister Philpont's working hard to uh, uh, build up communities and build those relationships. And, uh, and, and Mike, uh, what was your takeaway from this week and all the work you did? Well, in the Lane Claims in particular, right, this is at the, at the very root of the, of the historical injustices that have happened within Indigenous communities. And so what we're trying to do is, okay, how do we, as Don said, how do we improve this process so that we speed up the process so claims don't take a generation uh, in order to, to get an agreement upon them, to ensure that they're living documents so that moving forward, it's not just, okay, we signed an agreement, great, nice to know you, have a nice life, come back when you can't stay so long, yeah. right? This is, this is an, an evolution, not a revolution, right? So we're, we're finding that if we really do want to establish reconciliation through a nation-to-nation -nation relationship, land claims are at the root of it, we need to get this right. Uh, we need to be able to provide funding levels, and we need to be able to speed up these agreements. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And uh, And uh, if you like what you saw, you can go to all four of our Facebook pages and uh, please share and, and tell your friends about what we're trying to do here uh, for Canadians and for uh, everyone. Well, thank you, Robert, for what you're doing here today, too. Yeah, it is just great to be able to get us all together and have a conversation about well, this. Well, usually you're, you know, usually, Mike, you're always, uh, you know, high-fiving everyone. So it's hard, sometimes hard to get okay. to <laughs> hugging. Mike likes to hug, yeah. Miigwech, my friend. Yeah, at that point. Yeah, <laughs> Okay. Hold well on, everyone. Okay, I gotta run.